President Rodrigo Duterte appoints Justado Peralta as the new Chief Justice on Wednesday, October 23. Peralta will serve as Chief Justice until his retirement on March 27, 2022. This means Duterte would have the power to appoint Peralta's successor, who will serve beyond the president's term. During the Judicial and Bar Council interview of potential candidates on October 2, a teary-eyed Peralta said he deserved to be Chief Justice. Sometimes sentimental ako eh. I'm sentimental no? If I remember what I have experienced since I started working in Rome, I hear up eh. <laughs> And I think, I think it is a, I think I deserve to be here in Yalkit because I worked all these years. I worked very hard all these years. I'm not a top notch yet. I'm not an honor student. But I, I think I was able to compensate with the work that I've done. He is the most senior justice on the bench after senior associate justice Antonio Carpio, who will retire on October 26. Peralta edged out associate justices Estela Perlas Bernabe and Andres Reyes Jr. for the chief justice post. A native of Lawag, Ilocos Norte, he was Sandigan Bayan presiding justice in 2009 when then-President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo appointed him to the High Court. During his stint at the Sandigan Bayan, Peralta penned the ruling that allowed Marcus Crony Danding Kuwanko Jr. to retain his 20% share in San Miguel Corporation instead of awarding it to the farmers. In the SC, Peralta's most controversial ponencia to date is the hero's burial of the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos. Peralta wrote the decision that allowed plea bargaining in small-time drug cases and the equally controversial People v. Romy Lim decision that set a precedent in dismissing weak drug cases. Peralta never voted against President Duterte in cases that directly impacted his administration, like martial law in Mindanao and the co-warranto ouster of Maria Lourdes Sereno. The Philippine Military Academy confirms the authenticity of two viral videos showing the brutality and humiliation endured by cadets in the hands of upperclassmen. The videos were taken inside the PMA campus barracks in Baguio City. One video, recorded in February 2018, shows two plebes forced to do squat thrusts in a room with two upperclassmen. An upperclassman started mauling one of the plebes, punching and kicking him. He also tried to strangle the plebe. Another video reportedly from 2017 shows four upperclassmen in a room with two plebes. Two of the upperclassmen took turns barking orders, manhandling, and beating up the plebes as the two other upperclassmen looked on, laughed, and goaded their peers. One upperclassman kept slapping and hitting one of the plebes with his elbow. He used his combat helmet to repeatedly hit the hand of one plebe and the backside of another. <laughs> <laughs> PMA spokesperson Captain Cheryl Tindog says the offenses they committed were not and never will be sanctioned or tolerated in the PMA. Five of the six upper-class cadets in the videos were transferred to the PMA holding center. The sixth cadet was already discharged from the academy. The two videos surfaced weeks after Cadet Darwin Dormitorio died of injuries from hazing and torture on September 18. To monitor cadets, PMA Commandant Brigadier General Romeo Bronner Jr. says they will install CCTV cameras and blind spots in the barracks. This will not include shower stalls and rooms of cadets, where the hazing of Dormitorio and the plebes in the video took place. Doctors advise President Rodrigo Duterte to rest and take medicines for muscle spasms during a checkup. Unbearable back pain forced him to cut short a trip to Japan for the enthronement of Emperor Naruhito. Duterte's trusted aide, Senator Bong Go, says the consultation shows Duterte only suffered from, quote, purely muscle spasms and no other serious condition. Duterte underwent an MRI scan and was given pain relievers. Goss says the president is not required to go on total bed rest, but was advised to avoid standing up. Presidential spokesman Salvador Panelo promised to issue a medical bulletin on the president's health, but no results were released as of Wednesday evening. 
Beijing plans to remove Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam after nearly five months of pro-democracy unrest. The Financial Times reports Wednesday, October 23, the pro-Beijing leader continues to face sustained criticism from protesters in the semi-autonomous city. So far, the Chinese central government has given its support to Lam, calling the demonstrators rioters and condemning the violence. But according to the report, Beijing is planning to replace Lam with an interim chief executive. Lam's office says it would not comment on speculation. Lam earlier refused to grant any major concessions to protesters and even invoked a colonial-era emergency law to ban face masks in protests. She was heckled by opposition lawmakers when she tried to deliver a State of the Union-style speech. The feud between the Barreto sisters Gretchen, Marjorie, and Claudine trends again on social media after Marjorie gave an interview on Tuesday, October 22. The interview looked back on the siblings' clash during the wake of their father, Miguel. Filipinos online react to the revelations, sending Marjorie's name to the top of the trending list. Marjorie talked about President Rodrigo Duterte's visit to their father's wake and how the president tried to convince the siblings to reconcile. Marjorie said she refused because she could see Gretchen's insincerity. Claudine, their younger sister, who has recently taken Gretchen's side, shouted at Marjorie, You're unbelievable. How dare you? Marjorie also denied Gretchen's allegations their father's death was triggered by Marjorie's actions. She also claimed Gretchen didn't watch over their father while he was in the hospital. Following the interview, Gretchen rebuts her sister's statements on Instagram. Gretchen posts, You are radiating with so much anger and envy and highly paranoid. Gretchen says she was not allowed to go to the hospital because of tensions with Marjorie and Kaloohan ex-mayor Recom Echeverry. Marjorie also admitted in the interview that Echeverry is the father of her youngest child, adding it is her weakness to fall in love with a married man. She adds she is not a mistress for money. Marjorie says my sister's boyfriend is powerful in a very bad way, referring to businessman Atong Ang. Gretchen is a longtime partner of tycoon Tony Boy Kowanko. 